Hello and happy Valentine's Day. Praise God. Now today is Valentine's Day and everyone is celebrating love. Now, you know, some people say oh, we don't celebrate Valentine's because, listen, the world is celebrating. And the Bible says we should join those, to celebrate those that are celebrating. Praise God. So, but what do we do? Our celebration is different from what they celebrate. See, what they celebrate is not love. Many, you know, many times we, we, when people talk about Valentine's Day, it's all lost. But guess what? We know what love is. So it's an opportunity for us to teach them this thing that they celebrate, which is love. Praise God. So listen, I expect every born again believer to take the advantage of that this day, you know, gives to teach on love. And what is love? God is love hallelujah so take advantage of the day express love to someone it's not just about giving people things that's wonderful that's good but also it means taking the message of love to someone god loves you you know you know you know just sending that as a message to someone you just say hey i just want to let you know something god loves you and that's all you won't tell how many people that's going to deliver today. So why don't you do it? Just, just type a message to someone. Maybe someone you've not heard. So you've not heard from me. I say, ah, I just felt it in my spirit to let you know something. And what is it? God loves you. And, and, and just leave them like that. Praise God. Now, all we're talking about is, is God's expression of love to us. Praise God. So Because he loved us. He created us into this world. Because he loved us, he sent Jesus to us. Praise God. Now, I was showing some, something to you yesterday. Jesus said in Revelation chapter 2 that he is going to give to us the tree of life to eat. The same tree God told Adam, don't eat. Has anything changed? Has God changed? That's why I told you, God never said to them, don't eat of it. God only said to them, you cannot eat it freely by yourself. The reason is this, and, and this is where I've been going to all this while. Jesus was ordained to come and give man life. Do you get that? Why? Because Adam and Eve, they were not custodians of life. They were not created to have life in themselves. No, they were not. You see, they were the beginning of God's creation for man. But God wasn't done yet with them. God was taking them through their stages of obedience. And when their obedience was full, then Jesus, it would have been the time for Jesus to come and give them life. So it means Adam and Eve, they were expecting Jesus to come. Adam and Eve. Oh. You know what the Bible says? The annex expectation of the creation waits for the manifestation. Note those words. Of who? The sons of God. Now he goes on to say, let me read it for you. Romans chapter 8, verse 19. For the NS expectation, Romans 8, 19. For the NS expectation of the creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creation, for the creature, follow this carefully. For the creature was made subject to vanity. Not willingly. Are you following me? Not willingly, but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope. Who subjected the creation to hope? The one who created them. Now it says, because the creation itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain until now. What's he saying? He says, the creation was made subject to vanity. Not willingly, but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope. 
So God created Adam and Eve and subjected them to hope. Now that's why he was giving them instructions. When you follow these instructions, you will get to that hope that you are believing for. You know, Adam knew that there was life, there was something greater than what he had. Adam knew. And, and they were supposed to walk with God and follow God until they get to that place where that thing is given to them. You know, God said something in, in, in Genesis chapter 6. Now, remember, God says, let us make man in our image and after our likeness, right? And I told you, Adam and Eve were not made in the image and likeness of God because God is a spirit. And Adam and Eve, they were not spirit. They were flesh. Now, look at what God himself said in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 3. Now, this was when things were going haywire. God had driven them out of the garden. Things were just... Now, look at what God said. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Who made man? God. They didn't just say he was making man in his image and likeness. Now, this is God's confession of man. He said, look, my spirit is not going to always strive with man. Why? Because man is flesh. But I thought he was in your image and after your likeness. No, he wasn't yet. He wasn't yet. See, Adam and Eve were not going to be in the image and likeness of God until Jesus comes. Now, we go to John chapter 3 and Jesus talking to Nicodemus and he says, Except a man be born again, he cannot receive or enter the kingdom of God. And said, what are you talking about? He said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So, we don't get born again because Adam sinned. No, sir. We get born again because we were made in the image of Adam, which is flesh. And now we need to be made in the image of God, who is spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? Jesus came to introduce us to that life of the Spirit. That's why he came. Even if Adam had not seen, he would have still come. Because Adam and Eve, they were waiting for him. This is my Valentine gift to you. Receive it and be blessed with it. Praise God. And have a wonderful weekend. We are going to continue this surely next week because you need to understand this. God bless you. Bye-bye.